Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. Since it's Pride Month, I figured why not just do a really quick, fun, simple project. So I grabbed this little wooden star from the dollar store. I removed the string, primed it with a little bit of gesso, which gives it a nice tooth and will keep the wood from absorbing like all the paint. So we're gonna go ahead and keep this really simple. And in fact, I'm gonna grab this camera and bring it down so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. All right, there we go. Okay, so instead of doing the traditional using the brushes, and we might use them a little later, I'm going to kind of go blop with a red. Then I'm going to take some orange here, give it a blop, and so on and so forth. So I have kind of all the colors of the rainbow. And I might, oh no, I need to shake that up a little bit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See if I can remedy this and soak that a little bit up. And it's fine because we're just going to do a whole smudge thing anyway. There we go. But that would have just gone on clear and we don't want that. We want color. So since I'm here, I'm just going to stick my little palette knife in and mix up my paint a bit. Oof. Okay. Uh, this is a brand new bottle. I just opened it. So sometimes when I don't want to forget to mix them up, that is exactly what happens. And there we go. Now we've got a pretty green. Silly, silly. So just a, a great note, you know, sometimes when I screw up, it's always good to show off what I've done wrong so that you can learn from that as well. Always shake your paints. So just for giggles, I'm gonna add a little teal in there before I go with a deep cobalt. Again, quick shake. Oops, there we go. All right, well, we'll start here. It's going to be a little gap and that's fine. And since I'm going to, I know I have a book here. It's an old book. This is going to be a little bit crazy. Work with me here. So I'm going to literally take my corner, kind of go right kind of halfway in to the paint, grab it and just start to drag it across. Get that kind of cool broken color. And now look at that, my book has some little rainbow on it. And I love that look, so I'm gonna do it on the other side. I'm gonna rotate the whole thing. I'm gonna grab the corner and so it's a clean slate and we're gonna just pull across and do the other side. Whoops, I didn't press down enough, so I didn't really grab the red. Ooh, but look at that, the blue and the turquoise did nicely. So, save my save my book somewhere where it can dry without getting all over the place messy. And now we'll just kind of do a couple of little fixes. So I'll grab a credit card light thing to help remedy that. Oops, any gap. Okay, there we go. Just kind of pull those colors. I think I can also come back here and pull a little bit to just kind of continue the spread of that paint. There we are. So that worked pretty well. Got a little excess paint. Just wipe it off over here out of the way. Go after it with a paper towel. Now I'm going to grab, flip this thing over and grab some of that blue and purple and just drag it across. There we go. So that's created just a really fun effect. And again, in between, you really want to make sure that you wipe it. I've got a big, thick chunk of paint here, so I'll just grab it again and kind of pull. All right, so that's where I had my original dot. It's a little bit bald. Let's see if I can't just come in and fix it a little. There we go. Okay, so there we go. Now we have like a fun kind of drag rainbow. I love how that looks. Look at that. You can just offload it wherever. Maybe I can grab some more and add a smidge more rainbow in this section. So here we go. We'll see what we can grab off of this guy. Let's see if it'll do anything. Let me grab some more of the red and orange from my palette earlier. This might fail miserably. I don't know, but it's always worth a try, right? We can kind of have fun. Yeah, it kind of worked. Let's see, there's gotta be some paint here I can maybe grab and borrow. Maybe do a little smudge there, a little bit. All right, 
Well, that's still kind of fun. So I'm going to grab the hip blow dryer really quick, give it a quick zap so it dries. So what I like about this particular project is that it's less about skill and more about having fun and playing with new techniques. Now I've got some gaps here, which I'm going to need to fill in a little. So I think maybe a little bit of purple here and I can just come in and do some tiny fixes and tweaks with a brush, like sort of finish that out with a purple, kind of keep a little bit of continuity in there. I could also come up with additional colors to add. I think this will do the trick. There we are. This is like the kind of thing where you could just grab some paint, grab a kid, or grab yourself and do it and have some fun. I know definitely my daughter would love to do something like this. Probably should be like, Mom, why'd you do that without me? And what I also like about that drag is that, you know, I didn't really have to worry about getting clean lines. It just kind of happened, kind of happened on its own. I mean, obviously not entirely perfect. I got a blue spot there, but in my opinion, good enough for kind of being fun. And this guy will wipe it down one more time. I think I much prefer how the cards do their thing versus the paintbrushes. Yeah, that, that worked out well. And then look at that cool rainbow I have there. So now you have to be careful. I can't now turn it and turn it this way, right? Because then I would be smudging and mushing all my colors together. But I can flip it over and just kind of, there you go, grab. So again, I'll wipe this off here kind of next to the rest and it's always fun to offload. Look at that. Now I have like really cool rainbows on my, on my workspace. So you could even, you know, do this project and then take your card and do some more. All right. One more blast to get this more dry. If you're watching, go ahead and say hi. Let me know where you where you where you're at, where you're from. All right, about just a little tiny bit more dampness right in the middle. I want to get. And now just for giggles, I'm going to grab the black and white pens, paint pens, and we're going to add the letters in. Boy, those, those got really well covered up. So, oh, painting my arm too. We'll kind of come in and do the B. I'm going to get it white. I'm having trouble seeing it. That's about right. We'll just add lead if I can't see it. We'll make it up and make it work, right? This paint is still a little bit wet, so I'm feeling the I'm feeling the pen kind of skittering across the, the squashy parts of the paint. So 
going to be a little bit gentle. I may need to come back in and consider like a second coat after it's dried a bit. Now I could also fill in some of these white gaps, but again, this was kind of a paint scrape project. Um, so I'm a little bit undecided and on the fence about that, you know, because it's kind of fun just the way it was. And we're going to outline this white with some black so that it shows up better. Up the K kind of loops down here. Here we are. I have lost the N and the D. We're going to make it up. Here we go. There's got to be an N right here, right? Maybe it attaches like so and there's like a dot. I don't know. Kind of loop this here. And maybe we'll kind of do a big loop like so. There. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> Nobody ever said I was good at lettering. It's why I traced it on, silly me, huh? Let's see, we really want to kind of thicken that guy up there and maybe thin that out. So a couple of things. Oh yeah, I've got some very thick paint here. So as I pull the pen across it, it goes and I can feel like the thick gooky bits. So we may be better off just switching to a brush where we can have a little bit better, better control over that paint. So I've got some white that might be just so I think I'll be fine. Be a good quick thick coverage. We'll, we'll tidy that up. It's kind of funny when you're trying to create like a nice smooth line and like the the, the pen just gets stuck. There we are. That's much, much smoother than my goofy lettering because, you know, painted on so thick I couldn't see my design I traced. <laughs> Anybody else ever do anything silly like that? Sometimes. Again, if you're, if you're watching, say hi. Let me know you're there. And, um, yeah, let me know where you're from. Obviously, I'm in Virginia. Well, maybe not, obviously. Or maybe I'm just wearing a Virginia t-shirt. Oh, no. You know, all the good things. And there's supposed to be a loop here. Well, whatever. We're making it up. It's, it's a flowery, loopy, funny. Funny bit of lettering. Now... I don't know about you, but I feel like those letters are pretty hard to see. And so the intention was not to just leave them plain white, but to give them a good black outline. And I'm thinking that since we're dealing with a lot of wet paint, I'm just going to grab some black paint. Quick blast so that I'm not smushing them together. Right, there's our quick our quick blast and now I've grabbed a super fine line pen or whatever this is it's a brush isn't it and it's just gonna allow me to kind of get around this to kind of accentuate the letters and so when you're working with a fine line you end up having to dip back in to the paint quite a bit and it's okay and so you press down and then as soon as that line kind of starts to break or you feel like, and when I say break, I kind of mean like, you know, when you're beginning to lose, lose your, lose your, lose your paint and you need more, just lift the brush up and go get some more. Don't try to drag it out. Because as much as it looks like continuous strokes, these pretty much aren't continuous strokes we end up needing to do. A lot of a lot of separate little pieces. One wet spot there. Once we get the lettering kind of done, I'll maybe come in and add some some flowers or other little whimsical designs just for giggles and fun. So 
now the B reads well, so hopefully the kind will show up real soon too. Oh yeah, look at that. Boom. Hello. Now you can start to see it. That is what we're looking for. So how are we all doing now that summer is kind of kicking off officially? Most of the kids are out of school or wrapping up with their last days of class. Has your, cha has your life changed pace at all? Are you still going strong and crazy? Or have you been able to downshift a little bit? I know I'm still in class. Um, got just a really big exam today. So you guys will often find that on Thursdays, I'm pretty eager to get out, get online and paint with you because it's such a wonderful way to just kind of unplug and kind of come down a few notches from little bits of school stress. Even grown-ups love to do that. Get a little bit of stress here and there. So again, this is just a wood dollar store cutout. Super simple. And we used kind of the credit card slash, you know, hard surface paint drag method versus actually a paintbrush to get this. I thought that was really fun. And so in my opinion, something like this sometimes is less about how it turns out and more about the experience of playing with that paint and and dragging the blobs of paint. Oopsie. Paint on my finger and just a quick baby wipe to get that up. Maybe wipe myself down too so I don't keep dragging, getting paint everywhere. There we go. Whoop. So you guys, what are you painting these days? Just finished a couple of big projects for summer for my members. So I'm really, really excited. Going to be dropping those fairly soon for my inner circle VIPs. We just did the golden feather. And we've also, let's see, it releases tomorrow is the birthday wedding cake, which will be super fun. And then kind of a one more project potentially as well, kind of towards the end of the month. All right, so now it says be kind. We're getting somewhere. So I'm gonna give that brush a quick rinse just to make sure that the paint isn't acting all funky. Now would be fun to add a couple of flowers. So we'll go ahead and grab hmm, something like the, sorry, really small eighth inch flat or bright brush. And maybe just kind of, let's see, let's make kind of like little flowers. Just simple, simple, simple. And I'm using a white gesso real quick first. And the gesso just creates a really nice matte finish so that it will take paint well. And now just to kind of make that maybe a bigger, bigger flower, just kind of keep going around and here, a little couple, slightly uneven there. We'll add some color to make that a little bit more vibrant and fun. Maybe go a little bit more flower power style here. Just with making like teardrop or almond shapes. I always feel like whenever I'm doing flowers, they always end up just kind of being like five, five petaled flowers every time. So let's do something a little different here. We'll go with a circle. Then we'll maybe kind of make it a little bit more daisy-like. We can probably accomplish that even just by doing some a series of fairly flat strokes from the brush.
You can get kind of stylistic here, even make it look a little bit goofy. I feel like I'm kind of on the goofy, kind of on the goofy train today. Add a few little background pieces if we have some gaps. And of course you can go a little bit more traditional. This is just an, an excuse really to kind of paint and have fun. So some of the sort of more popular flower types these days are really the ones where you just kind of come out and create little whimsical points at the ends. They're pretty, pretty easy to accomplish and just kind of have fun with. Also really fun to doodle. You think this guy gonna have six? I think I can get six petals on this guy. So we could have stopped with just a basic um, rainbow, but I kind of thought it'd be fun to to keep going and adding a few more a few more bits that we could color. And again, this is just a little bit of white so that it will take the color. Now we'll maybe just do a little bit of kind of fluffy, like so. Because all these dark and deep and intense colors would be very, very difficult to paint right over without like 20 different coats. And I don't know about you, but I start to lose my patience when I have to do like 20 coats. So add the gesso and it means it's like one, one coat after this. It works. Okay. So this is just kind of fun and silly and, you know... No big deal, nothing. But we're having fun. I think this one wants a, a jaggedy leaf. And this one. Oh, there we go. Okay. Give that a quick rinse. One more blast. And of course, it's time to break out the hot pink because hot pink is what we do. All right, I'm going to zip this out a little bit more just so I can say hi again. There we go. Maybe. Sometimes. All right, there we go. Okay. Hi. Ooh, I forgot to rinse my brush. I got to put that in before it goes dead. Okay, so I have a uh, fairly small flattish brush or brown brush sorry and just have some nice hot pink so I can come in and just begin to add some intense color to those flowers to give it that fun you know just goofy look and this is perfect for like kids you know or teenagers or whoever whether you are seeing it as a pride thing or you just really like rainbows up to you I'll just go ahead and fill in the hot pink real quick and then you have all these fun flowers. Now I know I'm looking at this and <laughs> I'm totally the one who'd be like, oh, and start coloring my, my leaves hot pink too. I'm gonna do my best not to not to do that today. I'm going to rotate this and go opposite here and get this guy that kind of same hot pink. And then we'll maybe pick a slight variation on color, color scheme for the other flowers. I tell you, I think this one looks really weird, so I will fix that guy up. And that's the beauty of paint. If you don't get it quite right, it's no big deal. You can always come back and, and tweak it. You sometimes just got to let like that one layer or one coat dry first and then just keep on going. Happy little flowers in there. Ooh, 
this is definitely a very beginner friendly project. And so far we just have the fun little flowers going on. Hmm, let's see here. I think I want to turn this guy into a sunflower. Okay, let's see here. I'm just going to grab my, my thick gooey paint really quick. So I am getting a yellow ochre. That's kind of a level one artist quality stuff. And we want a round brush. And because this is, oh, we're doing this one here. So I'm going to turn it kind of upside down. And I'll come back in so you can see that better. I just wanted to say hi real quick. So yeah, it's upside down. The reason for that is just so that I can kind of get to that. It's closest to me. So we will begin with a little bit more white here just to kind of add some bits because yeah that just went on funny and now grabbing some of the yellow ochre it's a nice thick gooey stuff gonna start sort of towards the center and pull out and pull out and while it is a weird weird color this is just the first layer Boop. just kind of pull out pull out and it's kind of like a blop and pull. So it's a very fast motion. I'll come in with a little bit of yellow. Just putting that right on my palette here, grabbing some yellow. And then we'll kind of come in right on top in the center. And begin to pull some yellow through that. And so that ochre also really helps kind of differentiate some of the orangey tones here. But as I drop the yellow into the ochre, it's going to pick up bits of it so that we really have kind of a blend, blended striated look. So when you see whether it's black eyed Susans or daisies or whatever, kind of just growing in fields in the summertime, they always have kind of a cool petally look there. Right, offloading some of my yellow actually. So I have back to the ochre, I'm going to grab just a little bit of the black. A lot more of the ochre, a lot more of the ochre, and the black, just mixing. So it's a brown mushy smush color and we can just kind of dab it in the middle, dab it in the middle. And then maybe a little bit of black just right on the tip. I haven't rinsed or anything and just kind of stipple it, so to speak, just kind of taking it and just kind of dabbing down. In some places that's going to lift some of the color in other places it's going to drop some color and so now we've got kind of a fun kind of just a fun flower like a no big deal flower in fact i like that so much i'm going to do another one here so since i've got the dark whoops the dark colors already i'll begin with the centerpiece accidentally stuck my brush in the <laughs> in the black instead of the ochre for that one so Offloading my brush, quick rinse, just to get some of the black out. And then we'll come in again with that ochre. And see, I decided I didn't like what I did, so I'm just coming back and fixing it. And you can totally do that with paint. And so again, you see how kind of quick and easy a sunflower or black-eyed Susan comes together. Of course, it's a nice base coat that we're adding. And then we'll grab some more of that bright daffodil yellow to streak right through those petals. Boom. And I do grab fresh yellow on my brush every single time I go to do one of these petals because I really want to make sure that I'm leaving a good scrape of, of the yellow pigment versus the ochre pigment. There we are. Okay, so now we've got two fun sunflowers and some sort of random funky fun cute pink things. Offload and rinse a little. Get 
some green going. We'll come back in with our the green we just used. But so that it's not the exact same green as we have here. Oops, but I do have a little green smush that needs fixing, huh? All right, good enough. We will yet again grab that round brush. It's a pretty good sized round brush there. According to Artist Loft, it's a number six. Just got it from Michaels. So I'll take my green, but I'll mix it in with kind of what's left of that yellow ochre to tone it down and make it a little bit more brownish. And then I can kind of add some green smush in here for a, for a flower. And I know sometimes those green smushes look pretty boring when they first go on. And then we, we get the opportunity to fix and tweak them. But sometimes things look really cool when you do two layers of paint. And so we'll Here. And I had a little something here, so we'll add something. So now I can grab more of that fresher green that we just had and kind of pull bits of that fresh green right over on top of these flowers or the leaves, whatever they are. There we go. And again, this is kind of a goofy, fun, you know, off the cuff, let's play with paint kind of thing. I originally was just going to do a rainbow and then it just didn't, it seemed like it needed more. So we're just, we're just doing, so come play with me. I'm going to grab some of this light turquoise, move it over onto my palette. And I'm going to give this guy a good cover up. I think a nice turquoise flower will be fun. So just kind of dabbing around, kind of filling those petals, and then we'll add a little bit of a deeper teal towards the center to help differentiate the petals. And mermaid teal, mermaid tail teal, teal, there we go. So grabbing just a little bit of the mermaid tail, keeping it mixed in with my with my Annie's here for a slightly darker teal, and we'll kind of come in for the next layer. And so this is another one of those ones where with almost every stroke you have to grab more paint because we're working on a wet a wet surface. And if you have more paint on your surface than you do on your brush, guess what? Your brush is actually going to lift that paint off your surface. Okay, but can you see how we're kind of adding a second layer of turquoise in there? I've got a lot of brush or a lot of paint on my brush. Just kind of wipe it off real quick, and now I'm going to go for the even deeper teal towards the center. And it's okay if it gets a little blendy. Whoops, running out though. So let's grab some more. More, more, more. There we go. Big blobs of paint. And it's nice because it's not solid. Getting, you know, kind of variations of color in that. So now we just have kind of a fun turquoise flower. We're doing the bee kind. Again, offloading the paint because I've got a whole lot of gooky paint on this brush. And I think this guy wants a little tune up. I think the first time around, I went after it with a very small brush. get that kind of recovered for a little bit more thorough. There we are. Now I feel like this one, actually they both probably could use kind of something going on in the middle. So again, offloading grabbing some white or I think I'll just use gesso because I got oh I have white right here hey so that's a Newton Windsor or Windsor Newton I think that's a I think it's a level one artist paint 
you can totally do craft paint here. You do not have to have um, you do not have to have um, the heavier duty fine art paint by any stretch. So I'm taking the white and the yellow and just kind of going to mix them together because yellow is very transparent and will drive you bonkers if you're trying to place it. So I would rather go with a lighter yellow and kind of get a base color that we like versus a darker yellow and it just becoming a mush. So we'll do that and then we can always come back and add some more. And again, I just did that on wet paint, so it's, you know, not liable to behave quite the way we want. Okay, so here's a fun thing. You can literally dip the tail of your brush into the paint. And because I'm going into wet paint into wet paint, I'm trying to be very cautious and cognizant of what's going on on the tip of my, my brush here. You can kind of create some fun yellow dots in the middle of that blue flower. Oop, a couple more. Just kind of brings it, brings it around. Why not? All right, maybe a few of the yellow bits. And this guy too, but just kind of in one area. Sometimes when you kind of concentrate the dots, sort of in a half moon shape to one side, it helps give the illusion of, of depth. So it's coming together a little bit more. I feel like we've got kind of some kludgy colors here. It's all blending together a bit, which is not my favorite. And that's totally salvageable. Oh, now I just saw this one thing. I want to tweak these. There we go. Okay. Make the flowers a little bit yellower. We still want to see those base tones. I think we really want the yellow to be more dominant. even though it's kind of on a yellow background. I think it still works. The, the ochre really helps. So let's break out some magenta. All time favorite, quinacridone magenta. It's really wonderful, deep magenta. Kind of strikes my fancy when it comes to colors. So I'm going to begin with a little bit on my brush and maybe grab a little bit of the hot pink as well and kind of pull from the center of these hot pink flowers. I'm using a little bit of the hot pink with the magenta so that it gets a little bit blendier. Adds a little depth to the middle, keeps it interesting. So we're kind of saturated there. In real life, the difference between these two tones is significantly more than what's showing on camera. But it looks like I can amp it up a bit for the camera, huh? Let's do that. So it seems like there's actually some color there. There we go. Pop it on and pull. Pop it on and pull. All right. Much better. And we can do similar on this one. Pop it in the center and pull. So often, you know, when you see like flowers in the wild, of course, where else do flowers grow, but kind of out outside or a greenhouse, oftentimes they do have kind of a dark circle around the center because what that does is it guides, you know, bees and bugs and birds to find the, um, the pollen. So we can just add that in and it makes our, our flowers a little bit more interesting. And I think since I'm here and I've got the quinacridone, I'm going to put a few, a few of the quinacridone dots into the center very gently of my sunflowers. It just gives them that little extra oomph. So offloading some of that paint, such an intense, beautiful color. Now with my smaller brush, I'm going to revisit my sort of brownie black color and just grab some green, whatever's left and smudge it in there. Oh, actually look at that. I got some, we'll do that instead. The mermaid teal and the green. We'll mix that to make a darker green. That's better. It's a real bright, happy color. So then we'll kind of come in and 
add some some interest to to these leaves. I'll outline. But keep it light, keep it simple. It's always fun when your leaves have a couple of tones on them. They seem less flat and a little bit more interesting. So that's where we do this. So this guy, we'll just do kind of a highlight on the, or maybe it's more of a shadow. And we'll rotate over here to get this guy. Bloop. And maybe even more teal here. Kind of use it to help articulate some of the shapes. So now it's kind of coming together. You know, again, this is still just a super simple project. Um, you know, I will never call this my best work, but it was certainly fun. Come in and cover up a little bit of my white gesso marks here so it looks a little less, a little less wild and crazy. Not exactly the right orange, but get a little orangey tone in there. Some corner crit on. Nick things up. All right. All right. So that helps a bit. And then we'll give this flower here a little outline just for fun. Again, just keep it quick and simple, light, fine points, best effort. And I think this other pink one wants, wants an outline too. The sunflowers have got, they're kind of got their own sort of free form edge. So they are not going to want the outlines, but I think these, these guys will do a little bit better with better edge definition. Again, these are kind of fun, standard, easy, happy print painter friendly or beginner friendly flowers. Maybe give the this turquoise one a little bit of a dark outline. Boop, 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 boop. A little bit of a something on the, the leaves to kind of show them off as well. It's a little ziggy zag, keeping it light and simple. Maybe the center vein. And come on down here, get this guy. It's kind of like a, a stalk maybe. And so there we have it. Just a very fun, quick sort of mishmash project. Be kind. Your rainbow and some quick, easy to do flowers um, in case you're just kind of feeling like having fun playing with some, some paint. So I hope you have a great evening and we will see you again soon. Have a good one. Bye.